Okay, so for this 13 projects of Halloween, uh, I was chatting with uh, the other moderators in the Tim Holtz Addicts group. Uh, if you're not a member, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta join because it's just a fabulously uh, inspirational group. Um, but anyway, so we were chatting, and this project kind of came about so um, what I'm thinking here is I've got a uh, where did my uh, the one of the new etc tags um, and this is the uh, small tombstone uh, overlay package and so what it is is it's just it's thick board and then it has all these accessories and so normally you you know um, it's kind of originally made to go up here and then down here but because I'm thinking I wanna I wanna do a broomstick repair shop <laughs> um, I want to get some dimension here and to appear as if like this is the you know um, the top um, of a building the architectural because I love this shape and I just think it it looks like it could look like a vintage building so um, what I'm gonna do is I want this to appear as if it's the you know inside so this will be wallpapered and um, you know this this to me looks like a wallpaper print so I'm going to glue this down and then up here I'm gonna keep it kind of more simple because I'm going to do some I'm thinking I want uh, like repairs to go on here and um, have these um, swinging <clears throat> the swinging doors so I'm going to use one of the archways thinlets and double side some of this paper stash and, um, and I'm going to adhere this these I'm going to sandwich this um, mixed media adhesive sheet by Thermoweb. They were so gracious and gifted me a sample box of items. So I'm going to sandwich this and then also um, just for a little bit more thickness um, I'm also going to cut um, a piece you know pieces of this mixed media foam sheet. So I'm going to do all this and then come back and show you where we're at but there really isn't anything um, you know too fancy about what I'm doing here um, yeah. so I've got all my pieces cut out and glued down and um, thought I'd pop on to show you the sandwich I used for the door so um, I die cut them, uh, one with the uh, adhesive, um, oh, the, uh, the mixed media adhesive sheet, and one um, cut one out of the foam sheet. This has um, sticky on just one side, so. I am going to. I also um, ran this the paper through the Vagabond um, with the uh, Lumber 3D embossing folder. And so that, because of the texture that it adds, it did shrink my die cut down a little bit. But I'm okay with that because we can always just ink up or paint the edges and you won't even notice but I'm concentrating and wanting the um, this top um, arch to be you know really lined up but as you can see it shrunk a little bit but I'm not even gonna worry about it and then so that's the one side and then um, because this doesn't have adhesive then um, you know I put the mixed media adhesive on the back of this one so again just kind of lining it more on top 
Plus it's always easier just to cut a straight edge, isn't it? So there's going to be the doors. And they'll go something like this. And then I also, um, this is texturized with the 3D folder. And just glued that down. <clears throat> and um, this piece I added more wood. And then this one here I did... Um, Distress walnut stain and put a layer down, splatted some water, and then lightly lifted it up with some kitchen towel. And then it was still kind of damp, so then I just took my really rough sandpaper, my sandpaper block here, and just ran it across to give it a little bit of texture. May not end up seeing that when we're all done, but. It just helped kind of rough it up a little because I want this to look more like a painted surface. So the next step is to get this assembled and to get to you know to start building all the accessories. Okay, before I start altering the brooms, I know for sure that I want to have one kind of hanging here right under the repair sign. So what I'm going to do is I've got this loose piece here and I'm just going to probably go, uh, let's get this centered. So if this is two, four, six and a half, then we need to go three and a quarter. So that's about center. And I kind of, I took some collage medium and just put it in there and then just kind of pinched this. And we're going to use some of the vignette hardware. I'm going to just take and put a hole here so let's see so I said three well three let's see you know I'm not gonna get all technical I'm gonna go here and here so let's go and I'm just gonna use my poker just to start there and then about right here and then we'll put some of the and I want the closed eye hooks and I'm just gonna screw this in there like So, then I'll take one of the jump rings, the bigger ones. Let's see if this is going to work. Kind of put it through here. this back up and there we go it's gonna hang it's gonna be great so um, I have a couple um, clean foam stamps um, and you know they just the fonts that I have just really weren't working for me so what I decided to do was I took a um, piece of uh, the plain um, collage paper and in my what was that uh, PowerPoint or whatever I just created um, some text and I think this font is alibi and then K 
Casmira and just taped it down um, to a piece of regular copy paper so then that way it can feed through and um, reversed it and now I'm going to take and apply this here to my piece that's going to be um, right above the broomstick and I'm just going to do that with some collage medium and my brush put a thin coat down now I'm going to want to you know distress and, and grunge this up so I'm not so worried about you know if it's going to be perfect or not um, so let's see I know it's hard to see but that's about it and now I just have a um, regular I don't know home copier it's an HP copier I don't have really like you know anything fancy but because I didn't move this around a lot it's not gonna bleed so I'm good with that and I'm just gonna generously put another coat on this side so then that way most of this becomes transparent and see I'm good with this because it's just adding to the character and you know the aging look of this okay so that's good and I'm good with those brush strokes in there because they're it's only these are it's just gonna work with me when I add when I start to sand and distress it up so oh that looks awesome doesn't it and then oh, where'd my little sign go yeah this will go right under it. Oh, I think that looks fabulous. Okay, we're going to let that dry, and I'll be right back. Okay, so while I was ripping this off, I looked, and I'm like, oh, no. Uh, I kind of didn't think about how I did the 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 sign or the, the tissue paper so how we're gonna fix this because I think the original plan was to kinda have this layered up here but how I'm gonna fix this is um, I don't like how this is doubled here so we're just gonna mark this and then just trim them off and I think I'll like that so um, we're gonna go about where this radius is so about here and then about here and then I'm just gonna snip them because this thick this thick board is you know really easy to work with I mean that cut is easy you know it's pretty easy it's just thick thick paper and then um, we'll end up coming below yeah see I like that much better um, just kinda carries this line down um, and we're so that'll work like that and then I'm just going to start just um, you know I mean the brooms are in there for repairs so we gotta uh, you know damage these brooms up a bit because they're just a little too pretty huh um, so I thought oh well one should be broke so let's break this one and then we'll just kinda act like uh, what do I got here? Let's use some of this. I've got <clears throat> mixed media art tape and it's white. Thinking of when, <laughs> you know, people break their glasses, you know, um, I think mainly in movies, but um, when they break their, their glasses and they just use some white tape, masking tape, whatever to fix it. So let's see how this looks. Uh, I've never used this before. Um, but yeah, you're supposed to be able to stamp and paint and just basically making your own washi tape. So we're just going to cut off a little bit of this. And I 
got a nail appointment later. They wait too long, and when they get too long, I fuss with them, and so yeah, I've got a couple breaks. Anyway, not that you care, but all right, and so we'll just act like this one is a repair, like this, and we'll just tape it. <laughs> oh, how fun is that? Okay. Uh, maybe we gotta rough these. Yeah, see, we gotta rough these natural fibers up a little bit. Maybe we'll shorten this one a little bit, like it's really been used. Let's go in like this. Oh, how fun. Oh, how fun. Okay, so I like that one. Liking the looks of that one. Then I thought, oh, um, I have some glitter washi tape. Because, of course, you've got the witches that are going to be all about the bling. Okay. There we go. All right, so... But if we just take and I'll snip this off because it's not sticky. I think these will be too thin, so we'll go with the thicker one. And just oh. <laughs> She is one glittery. <laughs> oh, how fun is that? All right. Just add a dollop of or you know the fun part of this is that could appear that that's what needs to be repaired is that it needs to be re what would that be I don't know like when they restring not really restring but when they recloth a I don't know, a hockey stick or something like that. All right, that'll be fun. So I just added a dollop of glue on there to hold that like that. Uh, let's see, what else? Well, there would always be, if we go like this, one that, let's get this really, needs new bristles. So how about if we just clip a lot of these off and make it really, really scarce. <laughs> Alright, so that looks pretty... <laughs> like that definitely needs some repair. Uh, and then let's see, what about this? See, and this one's already got kind of a crooked handle so I'm cool with that and then um, what could we do with this last one no I think this last one I just pulled this the handle out and we're just going to kind of add some of the collage medium to tighten up this base Kind of like what I did here for this one. So we'll just add a little bit here, pinch it, and then we're going to uh, just kind of like attach these two together. Like they came in like, uh-oh, got to put them back together. So something like that. 
and then that way we could always get this to lay more on the side break it up a little so it's not all so vertical we've got we'll have a, a horizontal piece to work with so I'm just going to pinch this like so and then I'm just going to use a clip to kind of get it to stay together like so okay so now the next step now I'm going to save these bristles because I think I'm going to end up adding some of them to the around the bucket or whatever we decide to put it in so I think I'm, I want to get these doors attached so then that way um, we can start putting together the there's a, the layout lights bothering me okay so I'm just going to this is still raw paper and because I'm gonna want to do crayons and stuff I want to really seal um, this paper because I don't I'm looking more for the aged kind of chippy painty kind of you know wood effect so I want to seal these so the paper doesn't absorb all the stuff that I'm gonna be doing to them so I'm just gonna do quick coats on here and then once they dry I'll be back and we'll start to antique and grunge distress these up all right all right so these are dry so I'm going to I'm not going to use ink because I want um, you know the distressing and what I do here to be permanent so I've just got some black soot. I'm just going to use my finger and then just apply on these edges some of the paint. Working in sections. So then that way I can also rub some of it back. And if the baby wipes a little too wet, you can always use just a paper towel. And look at how that's getting into those grooves from the embossing folder. And see, I mean, it's really easy to cover up that the fact that, you know, they weren't the same size. They shrunk after adding or after running them through with the embossing folder. That's okay. You can fix that. And so by doing this, it's also making, you know, like I said, that texture pop out. <clears throat> Plus looking like it's just some paint that's just worn away. Lightly really really light pressure I can also bring my finger across so that wood grain pops by just dabbing instead of rubbing with the baby wipe it's kind of making it blotchy so there we go okay so now they're both done they're kind of still a little bit wet um, but I'm also while I've got the black out I'm also going to do the same with the wallpaper, you know, the inner portion of the store here, just kind of really just randomly framing this and adding some color around the edges. And like I said, I'm using 
uh, the distress paint not only because I love the consistency um, but it just reacts with water in just such a unique way and um, you could use ink or whatever you you know have on hand um, but just remember with the ink uh, you know uh, it would be it wouldn't be permanent like I'm wanting here with this base layer for um, uh, you know because we'll probably be adding some ink I'm kind of I'm sorry I'm <laughs> concentrating on this and not making much sense we'll be adding some ink but yeah I want this base layer to be permanent that's why I'm using the paint and let's get some in here because just kind of pulls it all together and then I'm also going to get some of this paint into these grooves up here you could also use distress crayons which we may end up but those um, you know won't be permanent for this base Yeah, just being random, enjoying the paint on my fingers. And again, if it's too solid, I can just dab some of that away. Or, you know, you could rub it away too, whatever you like to do. Uh, and then the final one here, let's get some here on the sign. Kind of trying to look as if it's worn and eroded by you know natural elements now this being the first layer what I'm really looking for is this black soot to get into those grooves because we are going to be adding some lighter color to kind of look as if it's chippy so the black's almost done here and I'm liking that just get this edge I've got some on my fingers. Alrighty, so that is coming together nice. Ooh, I missed our little wood trim piece here, so let me Wanting this to stand out that there's some texture in there. Okay, I'm going to let these dry and wash my hands and I'll be right back. Okay, so to add a little bit of, I don't know, like fabric or just this this texture substrate into the project I've decided to use some of the textile surfaces by Tim Holtz and I ran off um, another um, print with the tissue paper uh, this one's using font uh, it's called juice um, and I am going to glue this down but I didn't go reverse with this because I'm going to kind of do I didn't it's going to be wetter in the back so I didn't want the uh, ink to move if it was going to 
and what I'm going to do is kind of eyeball this. This is about, um, what is this? Two and a half inches. So I'm going to lay some, I've got some of the vintage distress collage medium and I'm <clears throat> about two inches here I'm going to lay down some of the collage medium and I'm trying to stay in you know a rectangle because once I lay this tissue paper down and it dries I'm going to be ripping it up so it's got a really soft edge on it you could also I mean if you're more comfortable you could also um, you know pre-wet this and then rip the edges but I'm okay trying it this way so there we go and it's smearing a little bit there but I'm okay with that it needs a little bit more right up here maybe going to let this dry actually why waste all that time to let it dry just to put another layer on so I'm going to also grab well let me clean my brush off since it's got the vintage on there where's my bag here's my bag okay so I want to stop any smearing from happening here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my palette knife somewhat uh, no this one's a little too stiff so let's use let's use this one it's got a little bit more spring to it and I'm gonna grab some collage medium this works also too like if you wanted to seal something maybe it'd be you know um, oxides or um, oh I'm getting some of these loose bristles in there that's all right um, if you want to seal anything that's going to react with water what you want to do is you want to give it one one swipe across without disturbing your product and let it dry so what I've got here is I've got like a nice you know pretty generous bead because I want to go I'd rather have too much on there with this first swipe versus not enough and having to go back through because your what you know your the the moisture in your you know your glue or whatever you're doing this with is going to react so you want to make sure that you can go the first sweep and so I'm just going to kind of angle this let me show you first and then do it but I'm kind of angling this on the side so I can sweep it across and see I didn't quite have enough and that's okay I'm just gonna pick up there and then go across okay and now I'm going to let this dry and um, you know because this is going to dry clear but it's just it's sealing it so then whatever work I do afterwards I know that that ink isn't going to you know react or smear or um, yeah so that's a little tip if you wanted to seal any kind of water reactive material like you know inks oxides sprays um, okay okay so I've got the ideology metal gates and I think they're gonna it's gonna look great here but I want it to look like I want it to have a curve so 
<clears throat> I am just going to, I like the shape. I think that'll be a good shape here, good curve. So I'm just going to gently press and work this to bend. Yeah, see, it's kind of starting to, I gotta, let me, because although it's metal, because it does have the give, you just have to be careful that it's not going to crack in half. So I'm holding this area here in the middle and then just going to work the sides. So there we're getting a good curve. And again I've got a little stress spot here. So I'm really making sure I'm holding that to not have it crack all the way in half. that's going to work. I mean, your your eye's telling you it's curved, so that just might be enough. Maybe just want to, maybe I just need to figure out something that I can put here just to give it that additional depth. So let me look through my stash and get this figured out. Because I do like that. I think that's going to look really cool. I ripped off, because this is dry now, and I ripped off the tissue paper and it's not quite pulling up <laughs> the collage mediums working so well it's it's got it's not quite pulling up but if you've watched any of my other videos you know um, you know this isn't gonna bother me and we'll just figure out how to make this work so I'm thinking first I'm going to rough up these edges with just a you know really heavy grit sand sandpaper adheres to a block. Which that's coming up, that's doing what I'm looking for much better than just the ripping of it. Being careful not to scratch and get my glass media. I don't want those scratches. Okay. There we go. Alright, and then here, where I ripped this up on accident a little bit, we'll just add a little bit more collage medium. Okay, <clears throat> that looks pretty good. Now this is on a sticky back, so I'm going to leaving a bit of an edge because we're gonna we're gonna. Take some of the strings off this and rough up these edges. So I'm just cutting. It doesn't have to be exact. Although I am going to use my craft knife for this here because I want to make sure that I can always use my paper trimmer too but I don't feel like pulling it out so I'm just going to go on the metal side of my ruler here line this up and then 
actually I want to give it a little bit more room so move it over a little bit I've got my craft knife here and cut this off and I've got enough of a line there to finish the cut with it alongside here. All right, I like that. And so this is going to go back here. Oh, oh, this is coming together so great. Now keeping in mind, if this is up here, keeping in mind if this is going to hang about here, and look at this. The vignette accents, the bat, doesn't that look perfect on top of there? I think so. Okay, so if that's going to hang there, we'll come down oh, right about there. So I'm going to get a piece of scrap paper, and I want some body to it. This is some of the uh, mixed media card stock, or uh, Actually, this is matte board, white matte board. So it's got some body to it, which will give me a nice thickness. So I'm actually going to measure, because with me roughing these edges up, I don't want to adhere and put the stickies on these edges down. So let's see. So if I eyeball this, this is about here. a wonky line but that's all right like so and then about here okay it's a little long so let me take off a little bit more So let me just take the sticky off here. And lay this down. There we go. Okay, that looks good. And then if we start to unravel. Now if you find that the sticky is bothering you here, then you could probably dampen it or add some collage medium to take that sticky away, but I'm okay with it because I'm going to want some of this to be sticky so I can stick it down. So I'm really just wanting this edge to be more. Yeah, See that? It's giving me a real nice frayed edge. Okay, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> All right. So if the broomsticks are going to come up about that high, where do we decide about right here? Because if the broom's going to come down about there, maybe a little bit lower. So about right above the hinges. That is some sticky stuff. Okay. And because I want it to be more of a sign or appear as a sign, I'm going to use foam dots and adhere it there. Okay, so I'm going to apply some crackle paste. <clears throat> Along the top, this is going to hopefully end up looking like it's a bunch of chippy paint. 
So I'm just using a real light touch and applying a pretty decent amount, wanting it to skip because that's going to just help with the look of chippy. And then it's going to do the cracking on itself too, which will be able to remove some of it. So everything's coming together nicely. Also, I found a piece of just an oval piece of thin press board or whatever you can buy. I think I got this at Hobby Lobby. And so while that's drying, I'm also going to take and glue this base so that not only will it stand upright, but I also want this base to be able to build out the front a little bit. So um, I'm just going to do that probably um, just by bracing something in front and back. So then that way I'll just beat it here with some glue and we'll be back. Okay, so I've glued the bottom base on and also the fence here. And I wanted to color in, here's the crackle paste and that's all crackled, but I'm gonna color in the, color the crackle now. So I'm just gonna do that. I've got walnut stain here and I'm just gonna grab a little bit of it. I've just got an old paintbrush. Obviously, it's chipping off. It sat in the water a little long. Don't need much of this. And just start to brush over this. bit of water just so it gets down in there. It has a little bit of shade variance. Looks pretty good. back some I can do that with the because we're just really wanting it to look a little weathered maybe add some here just to pull it together okay I'll let that dry see how that goes Okay, so there's the brooms all glued down, and I don't know what happened, but I seem to have lost that one that <laughs> I tied with the little broken piece. I don't know how. I mean, my area is only so big, but yep, it's, it's gone. <laughs> anyway, um, now I'm going to take and just um, glue some of the loose pieces here just to, because naturally, I mean, in a broom shop, they'd be all over the floor, wouldn't they? Yeah, I like that. Looks cool. All right, and then I've got the witches here, and so I was thinking, trying to put this in a spot so you can see it, I'm thinking like the witches here. So let's ink up these edges and 
I don't know. Let's ink them up and then I'll decide if I'm going to do anything more with them. So I'm just going to, I've got some black soot. <clears throat> So yep, really just getting those edges inked. And then because I'm going to have it standing out, I'll paint the black, the back black. And these will go here. I've got a little return to <laughs> will be returning sign and that's going to go there. And then I'm going to figure out what I want to happen up here, and actually I'm looking at these doors and I think to pull this idea down into the doors, I'm going to die cut some brown, or die cut a frame to put around these doors. So I will do that and be right back. Okay, so here it is done with all the little details added. Now, I didn't go through all the details. The video was getting long. Plus, you know, it really all just depends on what you have. Um, you know, so um, let's go through and I did end up adding, you know, the die cuts to the edge of the doors. Uh, added some bats, all different, three different sizes that I happen to have on and I added the um, paper dolls, the witches, and then just trimmed out the hands to add a broom just to make her look a little more three-dimensional. And let's see, oh, a glittery cat. See it there? And then the pumpkins. And then I actually, if you remember from the beginning, um, the hay bales, um, I actually didn't like them on either side of the gate, so then... Um, just to make the witches stand out a little bit more, placed them behind there. So now, plus, not only that, it also draws the coloring from here down. So it just seems more um, cohesive, I guess, to me and my eye. Uh, over here on this door, I ended up, my idea over here was kind of like, okay, you know, in every... <laughs> office every you know studio to me everywhere there's always an area where you just have tons of just stuff you know pinned up and um, so this was kind of like the pin up wall and it's got the you know will return clock another bat and um, let's see I added the 10% off which was just I actually ended up using a Christmas uh, ephemera and just flipped it around because I wanted the shape. Added some rub-ons. Um, oh, there's the piece done there. What I did was just cut a piece from ephemera because I liked the image and then just put it on top of some um, what are those milk coins turned around because they were the right dimension and size. Saved me some time from die cutting. Added some more bats. So yeah, thank you for joining me. I'm going to have um, some close-ups with less going on in the background. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you for joining me for this 13 projects of Halloween. Uh, I think coming up is going to be just a couple of real simple cards to get me caught up because I'm a little bit behind. But um, hopefully you'll join me for those too. As, uh, as always, I appreciate you viewing and have a wonderful day.